So uh, thank you both very much. And we're going to continue doing this early on so that you're not languishing um, hours into the meeting without having been called on and without knowing if you ever will be. So um, does this work for you? Yeah, I think it works. Good, good. That's great. Wonderful then. OK, let's now move on to 3.0. Um, board operations, board steering team membership. Now, I think um, uh, you'll remember that we discussed putting together, or really formalizing a group to, um, to put together the agenda for each meeting. What we left open was the membership of this group. Um, you'll recall that Floor uh, gave her opinion that the group should, uh, really ought to contain the the chair, the vice chair, and the clerk, plus two others. Um, otherwise, uh, I think that was the only, uh, oh, and that there should be one member from each town. I think those were really the only two um, stipulations that I recall. But um, at this point, we can come up with, um, first of all, agree that the, um, the board officers, the chair, vice chair, and clerk will continue on in this new formation, and then um, select two others, uh, one from Middlesex and one from Berlin to join the crowd. Um, so first of all, uh, <clears throat> may I uh, just ask you, Floor, and you, Jonas. Um, I know, Jonas, you, you expressed some misgivings about this last time. But I wonder if you would, um, at uh, Floor's and my, um, if we get whatever the Zoom equivalent of down on our knees is, um, to ask that you continue on. Um, I will. We'd be very happy if you did. I will. Thank you. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thanks very much. Um, That's great news. Amen. Thank um, you. So, yes. Um, so now uh, we would need a member from Middlesex and a member from Berlin. Um, I'm not sure procedurally how you'd like to do this. Have. Um, Would anyone from Middlesex like to? About nominations. Or, or Berlin? I, I, would, I would nominate Jill Olson if she'd be willing to serve. I would second that. Very good. <laughs> we have a we have a nomination in a second. Jill, are I you? I will accept because I was looking for more meetings. <laughs> we we figured as much. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> Um, okay, so I, I'm assuming uh, that's, favor. that's okay with Marilyn. I didn't. I don't want to take it away from her if she's just dying to do it. Oh, she's, you're muted, Marilyn. She appears to I, be moving in a vehicle. Yeah, don't. Let's not talk about that. Um, I. <laughs> I think I don't think she objected, but we lost her. We lost you, Marilyn. Happy yeah. To have you. Yeah, happy to have you. There we go. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay, an endorsement if I ever heard one. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor of Jill Olson as the Middlesex representative on the agenda committee, please um, click on your yes button, board members. Thank you. I'm not. Um, and, and if you're opposed, of course, click no at, um, at the same time. I see no, no no's. So welcome, Jill. We're very happy to have you. Now, um, this one, <laughs> sadly, may be a little bit easier um, for a Berlin representative on this, on this agenda group. Um, I, I think you may be 
the only one who's here tonight from Berlin, Diane, um, which, which I'm sorry about. Um, uh, oh, Lisa would like to know who seconded that motion, and I thought it was Jonas for Jill Olson. Am I right, Lisa? Yes. Okay. Um, Can so, I nominate Diane to be, even I'm not as a Berlin resident, nominate Diane to be the representative for Berlin? Of course you may, Flora. Um, second? I'll second. It's Mary Lynn. Marilyn seconds. Great. Okay. Very good. Um, any, uh, first of all, Diane, I suppose we should get your consent before you, we frog march you into this. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. We greatly appreciate your willingness to do this. Um, all in favor of Diane Nicholas Fleming as the Berlin representative on the agenda committee, please say, or please click yes or no if you're opposed. And I see. A sea of green. Great. Okay. Um, very good. So we have the new agenda. Um, here it's called the steering team. Um, the the purpose of it is to form the agenda for the board meetings, and it will consist of the um, the Middlesex representative Jill Olson, the Berlin representative Diane Nicholas Fleming, the clerk Jonas. Ino Van Fleet, the Vice Chair, Flora Diaz Smith, and myself. Um, so, uh, board committee schedules, if you would kindly turn to page three of your packet, um, you will find those schedules there. Um, the action, Deborah, if I'm not mistaken, is um, we, would, we would need a motion to approve those proposed changes. Can we do that on block? If everyone is comfortable with them, certainly. They can be amended, of course. So would anybody like to move the changes that are shown in the green column on page three of the agenda packet for finance, educational quality, policy, and negotiations? Well, ed quality and, pol and negotiations have no change. So that's that part is moot. It's finance, capital, and policy are the um, actual changes. I'm on the policy committee, and I think I didn't protest. When I, I thought the policy committee was going to meet on Tuesdays, Some bag. skip meeting Some bag. during the, one of those um, the full board meeting, so some of us could go to the other committee meetings. But I may have been wrong. Uh -huh. That's what um, Beth Curry. said it could be amended if you wish. <clears throat> yes, Kari? Oh. Sorry. Um, I liked how the Finance Committee met tonight prior to the second board meeting of the month, and I wonder if the committee would be open to that arrangement. Yes. So it could be the um, to maintain uh, the second, actually the second board meeting of the month. That's that's what's recommended. Is are you asking Kari if that should be changed, or you're asking for agreement? I'm sorry. The proposal is to to do what we did today. Oh, well, I, I, I probably misstated it, but it should be the second Wednesday meeting. Second Wednesday meeting. Okay, it says second Wednesday. I know my so my third, error. Third yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay, we still need a motion to approve these. I'll make a motion to approve them. Floor moves. Second. I will second. Second. Um, Jonas seconds. Sorry, Kari. Fraction of a second too late. Um, uh, further discussion. Hey, it's Mary Lane. Can I um, can I ask a clarifying question? Of course. And I'm sorry because I I am not at the moment able to look at the packet, uh, but I will be able to in about 20 minutes. Uh, but could you tell me what the times are 
for the policy committee that we're approving before I vote. So every it's changing it's changing the policy committee meeting to just Tuesday. That's what the green column says. And the time would be um, 4.30 to 6.30 through June. Perfect. And then you could okay. decide later. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, other other questions or um, Dorothy, it, it, does that does that fit? Yeah, good. Okay. I, I'm I'm I, I must have misread the chart. Um, uh huh. It's just the green. It's the group. It's the green column. That's what we're yeah, focusing well, on. Then I put it somewhere where I can't see it quickly. So as long as we're not the Wednesday one, I'm happy. Okay. Very good. Yeah. All right. Um, unless there are uh, there's other discussion to be had, let's go to a vote. All in favor of approving the changes as um, as in the green column that Marilyn can't see, um, please click on your yes button. And if you're opposed, click on your no button. And once again, I'm seeing all green. Great. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, so, uh, superintendent transition update. Uh, I sent around an email yesterday that, um, that I hope you've had a chance to see um, containing Brian's draft entry plan. Um, it, Am I, are, are heads nodding or, um, okay, great, great. Um, if you have any, anything to, um, to suggest, I would, I mean, I don't think there's any problem with your, because it's just in the realm of suggestion, if you just communicate it directly to Brian. If you, if there's something in the plan that you think, you know, um, you think ought to be changed, or if there's something you'd like to suggest that he add to it, um, just feel free, is my inclination. Um, everybody okay with that? Any problems with that? Okay, great. Um, next um, is the CV Fiber Letter of Support. Um, the original <clears throat> draft was on page four, but Krista sent around a revised draft, just that um, the, the template that was sent was, um, just struck me as a little bit rough around the edges. And it could be, you know, maybe a little bit um, easier to understand if um, a few changes were made. Uh, CB fiber. Um, what I would propose to do is have the board vote on approving our, our that letter of support, the one that was in Krista's email of this morning, and to um, and then I will I will sign it and off it will go. Um, do we have a motion to approve the CB Fiber letter of support for their grant? can make a motion this is Lindy that we accept. thank you Lindy great thank you um, second floor seconds great thank you very much um, any discussion of it any questions about it I'm I'm seeing shaking of heads great okay so all in favor of approving that draft for, um, for me to sign and to send off to the addressees um, in support of CB Fiber, please click on your yes button. And if you're opposed, on your no button. And once again. Reason, I haven't connected to the buttons today and I don't know why I, where to go. Oh, you want, uh, thumb, want to do a thumbs up for us? Then? Yeah, I'll take a thumbs up as you could. 
If you oh. want me to click on yes, you'll have to tell me what to look at because I have tried everything on here and I can't find it. Just click participants, uh, Dorothy. Oh, click okay. on the bottom participants and it'll it. come up. Got it. It's there. Thank you. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I keep learning new things about this about this setup every time we do this. Um, okay, so um, 3.5, teacher appreciation. Uh, you'll recall that we started a discussion of this last time. Um, it went into sort of uh, budgetary uh, territory or, or discussion of possible expense, which Stephen Look um, uh, quite rightly pointed out we would need to be warned if such a decision were to be taken. But there was interest in, in continuing a discussion. So um, I just want to make sure that we didn't choke it, choke off that discussion prematurely. Um, uh, Diane, uh, I, I remember you, you had an email with some interesting ideas. Would you like to just sort of go over that? Sure, sure. So one of the, um, as I was thinking, I was trying to think of what makes the most sense. So we had joked or talked about trying to do a parade to teachers and the feasibility of really trying to do that. It doesn't make sense. Um, and then the idea of um, appearing as a surprise at, a, at one of the staff meetings might be a possibility of of expressing our appreciation directly to teachers when they're in that. And then I was also wondering about um, exploring uh, if we did teacher signs, um, similar to what's been done for the seniors, but instead having it be about the teachers, um, you know, designating they're a hero, um, you know, we could come up with some, and then the ones for retiring teachers could be different so that it designates them and, um, and so those were just ideas that had popped into my head as to what was potentially feasible. And, and again, I know we don't have a budget for this and, and I'm not sure what even the expense would be of the signs, but certainly if we wanted to create a rotation of going to different staff meetings over the next couple of weeks, that would also be pretty um, inexpensive and, and doable as well. So those were just the ideas that had come to my head. Thank you very much. Um, any reactions from people? What do you think? I, I support it. I, I think that it would be good to show our, our, our support and I, I'm, I'm open to whatever the majority feels is doing. I, I like Diane's options. I think U32 knows how much those signs cost because they bought them for the seniors. Could somebody tell us? Uh, Stephen may know or Lori. Um. Do, you, do you know the amount of cost for the signs for seniors, Stephen? I don't. <laughs> I think that uh, Amy, Amy was the one who ordered them. She might be here somewhere um, and could let us know approximate cost. Amy, are you? Um, she's going to look it up right now, so not yet. So in a moment, we'll have that information in a moment. So I guess one suggestion for, for time and doing it is that maybe we could designate, if the board is interested, designate a small group to look into the options and then present them to the board, or you know, just a, a way to move it, to move it forward. It, it's mostly, I think, for Diane, and I'm speaking for you, Diane, just finding interest, right, from your email. Right, and and yes, and so um, obviously, if there was going to be an expenditure, as Stephen had said, we need to put it on the, the next agenda as to whether or not that might be happening. And then, so the other question would be, too, is how long was the, how long did it take to get the signs produced um, so that we can be sure that we at least get that to the teacher's lawns by the last week of school. But I like your idea, Flora, of just if there's a designated group that would like to explore it and come up with a proposal that could be put on the next agenda.
does um, does the finance committee, um, Floor, you're a finance committee chair, so you've actually already um, sort of indicated what you'd like to do, which makes, um, I mean, it sounds like it makes sense. Uh, Kari, do you have anything on this? Uh, excuse me, I, Amy says that they are $4.25 each and they were one with a two color sign. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Did she say how long it took and whether it was a local company or not? No, but I don't think we asked her that. Amy, can you look at that or give us feedback on that, please? I know she's here in this group. I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so it was signed here, uh, which is uh, the Russ family just down on Town Hill Road in East Montpelier. They're our alumni family. And um, it took us about a week. Um, she had told me she could run another set. It would take about a week or week and a half. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Um, Kari, you were about to. I actually don't have anything to add. I'm happy to support, but um, it doesn't seem like the best use of our time to be brainstorming right now. OK. Um, so we'll just send this to an informal group then. Um, did I understand that correctly, that that just uh, a brainstorming group? OK, very good. All right. So um, if you are ready then to move on, there's no objection. Let's go to um, 4.1.1, Superintendent's COVID-19 update. Um, and we can continue to move briskly if um, if you like, Deborah, don't feel you have to fill in time. No, um, that's fine. And I've this was published last week, and I assume you've had a chance to take a look at it. Uh, we also have a leadership report, and I wonder if we shouldn't reserve the time for our principals to make comments. Um, but we've uh, what I've stated in my report is. Um, just a, a quick highlight is that uh, we did receive approval from the Secretary of Education to amend our calendar that became a requirement after our last meeting to align with where we were. Um, we are currently examining our possibilities of offering in-person or remote ESY uh, slash summer school. And we ex anticipate making a decision by the 1st of June um, the main issues are related to whether or not we can manage in person um, and have the required equipment to do so. Um, we have a, an update in my report, and I know Stephen, during the leadership team report, would, was ready to give a further, more descriptive update on our graduation plans, which I know the board would love to hear about. Um, I included information in my report on the remote learning work underway and also a link to a statewide compilation of continuity of learning plans uh, that you can review to see what other schools are doing. Um, and we talked a little bit in our last committee meeting about child care and after school programming. Um, we do intend to offer child care and a community connections summer program um, as we've done in the past. Plans for fall are unknown. And we've, I think this update um, was, is something we could address now or later when we talk about some of the finance committee areas. Uh, but we have, um, we're just continuing to monitor all the changes that are occurring. Uh, the legislature is drawing to a, their work to a close and that will affect this year's uh, and next year's plans. And uh, I think that my report summarized that quite thoroughly. If you're all right, we can move on. Very good. Thank you very much, Deborah. Mm -hmm. um, before we do, any any specific questions, keeping in mind that we'll be addressing a number of these issues when we get to the leadership team shortly. Very good. Then we're on the bid recommendation action 4.1.2. Um, if you go to page nine of the packet, please, to refresh your memory, we will need a motion to approve Connor contracting for construction, as it says here. 
in the amount of $235,437. So moved. Floor moves. Second. A second. Chris seconds. Thank you very much. Is there a discussion of this? Um, is there anything to be said about this? Uh, anything further to be said than what we see in the memo? Kari has a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Kari. Yeah, um, I have two questions. One is um, there's the second bullet point talks about we will know more when the remaining bids come in. Could you clarify what that means? And secondly, if um, you could just briefly describe what these projects are, and I have to ask what makes them important to do now? Sure. Um, I can send you, Kari, the information that the board approved back in February, which lists all the projects in detail. Uh, this is not every project. Um, when you do bids, you um, some can be consolidated, and then you have also have to go to, to various contractors. This, these um, do constitute approved projects that were approved by the board. Um, I'm not certain I'll have every detail of each of them, but um, in specifically in Rumney, this is the acoustics project. And Lori, if you're there, I think you're there, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we have a roof project in Calus, and U32 has a number of projects. I'm thinking this one was um, the ceiling, but they had a ceiling project, of a, a sidewalk bid is not yet in. And they also had an electrical project. So let me see. Deborah, that is a project at U32 for the kitchen. This was to help us bring it up to code. Okay, so, so that, that was the ceiling and the and the electrical. Okay. Yes. And we're still waiting on us. The sidewalk bid is coming in. So these are all approved, and I'd be more than happy to send the full board a a, a full set of the paperwork that uh, was used to approve them previously. The question you raised about the second bullet point is that um, we anticipate that our some of these projects have come in under budget. Uh, the first one the board approved came in over. So what I'm stating here is that we'll know more when the remaining bids are received as, as to exactly how we are fitting within the budget funds that were set aside by the board. We were also required to get a waiver because of, uh, actually, no, we did have three bidders for this one, but we have others coming up that will be coming before the board where we did not have three bidders and we have to wait for waivers on those. And I have- Floor. So it just carried to add to that and we will get to this in the finance committee with your part of it too, but it, there was a criteria that we used to be to decide on these projects and so there, there's a, a larger plan for them, but we, you know, the projects that are taking place right now were priorities and that's, that's why the amount and, and how they, how it was decided was in urgency and code. Yeah. And, Right, and we did take a look at the fact that there were many other projects, uh, some which we decided could wait a year, um, but we did make them based on safety decisions. So. Good, um, other, other questions, uh, comments? If not, then let's go to a vote. All in favor, hit the green button, yes. Opposed, the red button, no. This is to approve counter contracting for construction as noted in the amount of 235,437. And seeing all green. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, um, next up is Ah, the 4.1.3 net metering contract to take action on this. Um, I hope everyone will have had a chance to see the um, uh, Deborah's email that linked to Google Docs with Scott Cameron's um, privileged attorney client communications, which gives all the background um, on this. But 
<clears throat> the idea is for the board to um, naturally, I, I don't have it in front of me. So um, if any of you do, rather than have me garble it and then have to be corrected, I, I can get one of you to do it um, right the first time. I was just going to say what the agreement was of the finance committee. I don't have the actual motion written down. Or, um, but, uh, can we go to floor, Deborah? Of course, yeah. Thanks. So the, the, the finance committee, we, uh, we agree that the contract had been reviewed by both lawyers, uh, Scott Cameron and Kingsbury's lawyer, and that it, we have, it's going to be done for a limited a relationship of two years, and we agree on that. So it's 18 months with the six months to, to, to finish the contract. And what we decided as a, our recommendation was, was that, that it will end in two years, and that the, this has been a, a, a um, it's, uh, uh, this has worked for us for in the past, and we have saved ten thousand dollars per year at least, and and it's something that the facilities committee, the facilities committee, sorry, that's what I always do, the finance committee recommends. So uh, I don't, if you want to, we all took, we didn't take the time to look at the contract. What we would be doing is is uh, uh, during I read the contract, but we we would be agreeing to let them go forward and finalize and, and have uh, the chair and Deborah sign the contract, correct? Correct. And then Kari had some questions, which I can review from the chat if you would like, um, or Kari, you can raise them. Or I, I can address those questions. I've seen them in the chat. Go ahead, Robbie. Okay. Uh, let's see, Kari's three questions. One referred to RECs, renewable energy credits. Those are um, credits that are created by renewable generation. Uh, we don't create those at Kingsbury. It's complicated. Um, some hydro plants do, some don't. Some solar projects do, some don't. Sometimes they're retained by the utility. Sometimes they're sold out of state. Uh, there's, an, there's a New England renewable energy credit market. They've been controversial in the past. Um, it's an incredibly complicated subject. I'm sure you don't want to go into it. The long and the short of it is we don't create them and we don't sell them. If you were to go with a solar project, for instance, the RECs would certainly be part of that. You wouldn't get them. The solar, uh, the people who had the solar project would almost certainly sell them. Um, if there are no questions about that, I'll go on to the next point. Kari asked if there had been a review of the savings and the best and worst case scenario for the, for the um, for the schools, I, you know, I, I can't say obviously whether or not you re reviewed the savings. I know that the, the, during the five years we were in in a contract with U thirty two, it was a little over fifty thousand dollars in nominal dollars. Uh, the savings are a little more now because electricity prices have gone up and the value of the of the renewable energy increases when the value of the electricity increases. Um, in terms of best and worst case scenario, my recommendation to you and would be that. Um, we include in the net metering group, um, and, and some board members have expressed an interest in this, we include the Berlin Elementary uh, meter and the U32 meter. Those are probably the two highest consumption meters in the district that are in Green Mountain Power territory. Um, and we could allocate percentage of generation, however we saw fit between those two meters. That would give us, a, that would give us more um, it would just give us more flexibility and more more consumption that we could spread the use over if the use went down. For instance, I, I don't know how much has gone down recently because the schools have been closed, but I think that would be the best way to address that. And um, drawing a blank now on what the other question was. Uh, the ten is ten percent of the savings from the net metering credits a standard deal, same as last time, and should we negotiate? All right. Thank you. Um, I talked to Jocelyn, who's my attorney and does a lot of uh, net metering law and typically with solar projects. There, there basically are very few hydro net metered projects. Um, ten, yes, 10% 10 is typical. And because of the complexity of net metering projects, especially the complexity of solar projects, the rate you get from net metering with us, uh, it was actually quite a bit. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize until I talked to Jocelyn how much better of a deal it was than a, than a solar deal. But there are adders and subtractors and penalties if you keep the recs and, and um, uh, different things with solar deals. Um, and those, those affect what, what the rate, what the 
what those affect the amount the of um the value you get for your renewable generation and and so that affects you know whether what percentage of discount the the generator is willing to provide but anyway 10 percent is is right in the ballpark and and no i'm not interested in negotiating that great thank you i'm i'm good okay great thanks kari um and thank you robbie a any other questions? um yeah we have the expert here I don't think so. Um, so, so did you all, I'm not sure if you made the motion, Scott, I apologize. I, I, haven't, I haven't heard a motion yet. Um, the motion would be, at, Flora sort of explained where the finance committee came out. Um, what kind of a motion would get us moving to where we want to go? I would, I would suggest that the board, um, a, a possible motion might be that the board would um, direct the superintendent and their council to finalize a contract with Kingsbury Hydroelectric for a maximum of two years. And um, I think that should be sufficient. And then the details would be worked out by between our attorneys. And then if you would, oh, I guess authorize me to sign it on your behalf, of course. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Lisa, did you, um, first of all, we need someone to actually make that motion. Fleur? I'll make the motion. Thank you very much. Second? Um, Dorothy, seconds. Um, okay. Um, and so, um, further discussion? <laughs> Would you like Everybody's, me to? Yeah, no, no. sorry, Robbie. Go Would ahead, you... Robbie. Describe the contract. There's been some back and forth between the attorneys, but I can describe the contract as I understand it. So um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, Deborah right. is holding up her. <laughs> Only because we the board has received it in a separate email, Robbie. It's not that I don't want you to discuss it. It's I think that they've had an, an ample opportunity to review it. So would that mm -hmm. be correct? Everyone feel that way? Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we it, this was this was especially well documented. Um, I'm grateful for that. Um, so, okay. Uh, in that case, all in favor of the motion, please click yes. Opposed, click no. I'm seeing all yeses, no nos. Very good. The motion carries. So now we're uh, at 4.2, leadership team. Um, the leadership team's collected works begin on uh, page 12 of the packet, in case you want to go there. Um, Deborah, shall I have you be master of ceremonies for, um, for this segment? Um, I know everybody's interested in graduation. Um, yes, well, I, th I think it would be great since we have most of our administrators here this evening. Um, just to go through down to the report and ask you to say hello and make a comment or two um, as as their names um, are listed alphabetically or their schools are listed alphabetically. So, um, if you wouldn't mind, I think that would be most helpful, and I imagine everyone would appreciate that opportunity. So, I guess Aaron, um, I'm not certain if you're here at the moment, Aaron Boynton. If not, we'll go on to. I know he was here earlier. Let me just double check. Aaron, well, his he appears to be here, but maybe not right on camera at the moment. We can go back to um, Aaron later. Meantime, I think the next would be Callis. So Kat, would you like to make a few comments? At um, Callis, and I think this is probably true for most of our elementary schools, we're starting to settle into some sense of a routine. Um, it, it's funny though it's not, that it seems like every time we get used to a routine, things change, the guidance changes. So we've got to adapt. Um, I think that our game is improving every day. Um, and this opportunity, if you choose to see it in that way, has allowed us to partner with families in ways I don't think we ever even imagined. Um, that comes with some struggle sometimes, but it also um, has been an amazing, amazing um, chance to connect. Um, and I know that 
you know, you can read it in the report, but the elementary principals got together with Stephen from the high school this month and talked a little bit about the end of year traditions and rituals and how important they are. I think the focus for all of us is to plan something that is both safe and special. Um, and I recently spoke with some of my sixth graders about this. who are a little disappointed um, to have things look a little bit different. And I've encouraged them to really think about focusing on what we can do rather than what we can't do, um, because I think that is a little bit more productive. All they care about is, um, will they get a sign like the U32 seniors? I'm like, hold on, that's a little bit more special for the high school. <laughs> we'll probably get a sign, don't tell anybody. <laughs> that's it from Callis. Thank you, and Aaron is now back. Uh, he was a second ago, so let's see if we can have Aaron go back to Berlin, okay? Aaron, are you there? Great, yep. thank you. I heard, I heard you had some connection problems. Thanks for joining ironically, us. Ironically, yeah, ironically and honestly, my screen froze right before we were supposed to talk <laughs> and I had to re-log back in, I guess. So uh, yeah, I, you know, in terms of, um, I was thinking about this whole administrative report and even though we have different things sectioned out by school, there's so much that we're doing together as a team, um, as, an, as, as an administrative team. Um, and, uh, you know, just ensuring that there's equity with a lot of this stuff. Um, and as we talk about what the end of the year is going to look like, um, we've, I think we've done a really great job as, an ed, as, as a team, making sure that there's uh, some consistency in our communication to, to families um, and despite, and, and kids and staff. Um, and even though we have, you know, different sizes of student population and different uh, um, uh, demographics and um, not everything is exactly the same with the way our schools are, are. Uh, we're trying to make things uh, as smooth as possible for kids um, and teachers and parents and uh, you know, working together to um, be clear and consistent. So um, that's a good thing. I mean, specifically for Berlin, we're we're doing well. I think everyone's settled into what this has become. Um, and if we go into next year and we have to be back in this place, we'll be better ready because we've done it. Um, and I think I, I kind of have been thinking about that that uh, that quote, you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention or whatever. <laughs> it's you know, we've we've created so many new <laughs> and, and, and different ways to do things because we've had to um we've been you know forced to and it's really made us think hard about how we are educating kiddos and even though it's not perfect and isn't the way it's supposed to be um we're all doing a great job i think working together to to make it work so those are my comments thank you gillian i know that you're on the call can you hear us I can, I can. I haven't been able to have audio and video all afternoon, so I'm not even going to try now. Uh, I would echo what Kat and Aaron said: is that lots of it's it's there've been some really exciting opportunities with this. Um, I've been incredibly impressed with the Doty staff in terms of responsiveness to families and I feel really good about the, the comfort level that our families have in terms of letting us um, know when they're feeling stressed and they need a break and what, what supports they need in order to feel sort of ready to come back. Uh, it's nice to have, we have sort of similar models for our end of the year celebrations, which I think is gonna be good um we've started our library book distribution which i personally have, am having a ton of fun with because i realized it's actually less driving if i just am the bookmobile instead of driving the books to u32 it's actually faster for me to just drive around town dispensing books which is you know who can complain about that gig but we've also started conversations about thinking about next year and flexible groupings and how can we make sure, what are we gonna identify as really key skills that we wanna make sure that kids have at the beginning of each grade. 
And how are we going to be flexible and nimble in filling any holes that we need to fill? And so Jody's uh, Jody's cruising along. Thank you. Alicia? Yeah, I would echo a lot of what my colleagues have said. I feel like this has been an opportunity for the leadership team. I think we meet every single day about something um, and plan and are on the same page. We never have that opportunity. Um, it's a blessing and a curse because it means we're in front of Zoom a lot more, but it also means we're on the same page, which is really helpful. Um, as far as East Montpelier goes, my staff, um, they're incredible. They're they're continuing to be positive and upbeat and having the we can do this attitude. Um, I think the same goes for our families. I shared with you in the last week, we got our last two families who didn't have internet access up and running um, so they can all participate remotely, which is huge. Um, it took a while to get there, but we're there now and that's a big celebration. Um, we have some things that, you know, similar, like we're trying to stay the course and plan for next year and whatever that might look like. Um, and also remember to take baby steps and really focus on the here and now. We had our um, continuous improvement plan meeting yesterday, the final one, and really thinking about focusing on social emotional learning and getting our kids back and ready um, emotionally and, and making sure to focus on that at the start of next year is gonna be really important, whatever the start of next year looks like. Um, and we have a celebration next Wednesday for our staff meeting. We're having a virtual baby shower for one of our staff members who's about to have a baby. So we're figuring out new and different ways to, to kind of make sense of this whole time. Thank you. Casey. Thanks. Um, I would echo a lot of what's been said. Um, I think that <clears throat> Each week we continue to learn, as I, I wrote, we continue to learn more things, but there, there also continue to be lots more things to figure out. So I think we celebrate a lot of successes, but we also recognize that you know parts of Middlesex continue to have some pretty significant um, bandwidth access, uh, as we might some experience even in this meeting, who knows? Um, so I think that we continue to support students and families as best we can, and I think we learn learn bits each week and we continue to work with that. Uh, we're, we're pretty well connected to, to our students. Uh, we have morning meetings, we reach out to them by phone. We have other connections electronically for, for many of them. Um, the last meeting that we had the next day was our first um, staff car parade, as I think almost all of our, maybe all of our schools have done that now. It was a huge success to see so many of our kids and families were doing the second round of that um, this Friday for the Middlesex 2 route. So we're looking forward to seeing more kids. Um, I think in terms of faculty and staff, they are doing great job. Um, we Each week we reflect, we have uh, unit team meetings and we have a weekly um, check-in with our paraeducators and we reflect on what's working well, what do we need to focus on. Um, I think each week there are less things that we, we've learned more each week and there are less challenges. Um, and I think that's a real celebration that I think our leadership team has identified that um, shifting away from a deficit model of what isn't working to what have we figured out and what is working for us has really been important for the narrative of this time, both for our district and for the state and the world, I suppose. Um, and I think the only thing that, that, well, there's a lot of things weighing on us, but thinking about next year, the, the multitude of options and how to not become overwhelmed with that, right? So we're thinking about what school could look like um, and how to approach that in a reasonable way for kids. Always thinking first about how to support our kids and then making sure it's reasonable for adults to work within those confines. So there's a lot, but I think we've come a long way in, in the two months of, of this. Thank you. And that leaves U32, Stephen. So obviously can echo what all my colleagues have been saying about their staff. Um, not that it's a competition, but I realize that the U32 staff is probably doing the greatest job of all of this. But uh, um, but no, I, I, to say, I think all of our staffs are working really well together. There's a lot of ideas that are being shared, and so it's really nice. Um, the big news for U32 is graduation, but first, um, they've started on the track, and that's a really nice thing. So our track is being worked on, 
and we have two of the most beautiful weeks of weather, which is a really important thing uh, for getting that track done. So we'll give you an update as that comes along uh, a little bit later um, in, this, uh, in the year. But graduation, so um, I really I showed you just in our report a quick piece. Uh, what we're going to do is really two uh, types of ceremonies. The first one is gonna be Friday night at our normal time for graduation. We're going to have a, um, a ceremony that's gonna include our speakers. Um, we're gonna live stream it from the auditorium. And so um, it's gonna be a very small number of people. So obviously 10 or less. Um, in there at any given time, but we have a couple of awards that we always give out during graduation. So like the Gahagan Award, um, we're gonna do those and we're gonna do those in the live stream and record it. So if people wanna see it later, we have to work out the time on that a little bit. Montpelier is doing a similar program that evening as well. And so we're working on the time so that we don't overlap with them. So if people wanted to see both, they could, uh, cause we know we have families that are crossover and all that. Um, Saturday and Sunday is going to be the real thrill for all of this, and that's going to be the drive-through uh, diploma um, time. And so by TA group, we're going to have designated times for that TA group to drive into the bus lane. They will have, uh, all we can allow is the graduate to get out of the car. <laughs> they will be able to come across the state, going to set up with all kinds of options, and they will then be able get their diploma, um, socially distanced from any of the rest of us who are there and, um, and appropriately disinfected so that there is no problem with it. And then they are going to be able to get their picture from a professional photographer. Uh, families will be able to take pictures from out of their cars. We think we can manage this with two cars per family so that there can be more people there, but no RVs, limos, flatbeds, you know, any of those kinds of things. So uh, Alicia, you're going to have to cut it down a little bit for your crowd. Um, but the, um, but the, I think as a whole, we're gonna be able to get everybody through there in the span of about 11 hours. So six hours on one day and five hours on the other. <clears throat> if everybody will stick to their time, a lot of time, we'll stage people down in the Civic Center um, and then send them up the hill so that we don't have any traffic blocking um, Gallison Hill, but we'll be able to um, send people as appropriate in their uh, hour increments. And so we'll have TAs there. We think we can allow our teachers to be in the parking lot in their cars. So we're gonna have a shift of those people. Board members, we're gonna invite you as well to, it's been different in the past. You've handed diplomas to kids. You can't do that this year, but we'll figure out something for you guys to be involved. Um, but we're gonna, we've gotta man, maintain a lot of health and safety uh, requirements, but um, we did get the, uh, we got Dan French at the OE to approve this method of uh of delivering and a lot of schools throughout the state are doing something similar and so we think that um, we've got a good plan there's a lot of details and so of course i leave that up to other people to do which would be amy molina and lisa laplante um our, and uh heather clark warner are our three adults but we've got kids involved and we've got some uh, parents we've we've touched base with as well um, we can't duplicate a regular uh, graduation, you know, we just can't do it, but we can do some of the important parts and we can certainly make sure that everyone has an opportunity to walk across the stage, which I think is one of those big moments of I, I've done this, I've got my diploma, and so we'll make that as special as we can make it, and I think it's a good plan, and, uh, and so we're, we're hopeful. The full set of details will be out by Friday, but this I'm, I'm gonna release an email here in just a few minutes. Uh, I wanted to tell you first as a board in case there were any questions, and then I'll release this to all the seniors and their families so they'll see a few more details for all of it. Wonderful, thank you very wow. much, Stephen. Um, this how is about awesome, as a, as a senior <laughs> mom, let me just say, so awesome. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. thank you. There are your comments. Um, any others, uh, questions? Um, um, I was just curious, the number total. 119 graduates. And the date, the question was, what is the date? It's June 12th. Oh, June 12th is the, um, is the Friday night cer uh, ceremony and then the 13th and the 14th. So the Saturday will be from 10 to four, I think. And then the uh, Sunday will be uh, noon to five. I may have that a little off, but um, suffice to say, it starts at 10 o'clock on uh, Saturday and noon on Sunday. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Um, any other uh, that that was that was very artfully done with the dramatic climax at the end, um, with uh, great stuff leading up to it too. Um, so, uh, any other questions for the leadership team? I just wanted to point out that we have a section at the end about our planning and where we are in ESY and summer school. So I'd like to offer Kelly uh, and or Jen a moment to share on the future plans for instruction. Oh, that's, that's great. Yes, Thank please. Okay. Thank you. Kelly, you were Yeah, you want that now? Yeah. Here. Yeah, Kelly, why don't you start and then I'll tack on. Okay. So there's a committee of folks working, um, as you saw in the report, um, including um, Kara, who tends to court, usually oversees our summer program, our school psychologist, uh, a school nurse. There's just a crew of us starting to figure out and try to get our heads wrapped around whether or not we can safely provide in-person summer pro ESY for students who are eligible. Um, in the last week, all of the special educators have been reaching out to families um, to get more of a sense and a gauge of whether they would be interested in sending their students for in-person learning for the summer. Um, and um, I've, those are all due back to me tomorrow. But the, what the, the ones that I've seen so far, they're um, most parents, the majority of the parents at this point are leaning towards continuing with remote learning. Um, just not comfortable yet with what's happening in the world to start sending their kids um, into school. Um, there are some that would prefer um, the in-person. So um, if we can figure out all of the safety and health guidelines and get all of the appropriate equipment needed, um, I anticipate we'll have some uh, bit of a hybrid model where we might have a, you know very small groups of kids that come in at a time, um, but that's still a big if. Right, we have a lot, lot of details to figure out still, um, but that's all in motion. And I anticipate, as you heard Deborah say earlier, um, the plan and the hope is that by June first, we'll be able to make a, you know, more formal decision around what that's going to look like for students. I'll, I'll just tack on to that as well. I think that, um, as you know, last year we offered our first ever project-based summer school for high school kids and um, learned so much and we're so excited about being able to build on that first experience and um, that's going to be a little bit on hold for this year. What we are able to do is offer some programming for kids, uh, particularly in financial literacy, students who are interested in um, and working toward proficiency at, at the graduation level for financial lit. So that is an action. There's been a, um, an opportunity for students to indicate interest in doing that and a number of students have. So we're working on that. We're also, there have been just some super, super preliminary conversations about um, how and if we could use any summer learning opportunities remotely to support students who might still be in progress um, at the end of this year in terms of the work that they're doing. There have been uh, only a few very preliminary conversations about that, leveraging opportunities for, um, for some of our federal funds to be able to support kids that way. I think that earlier in the reports, Gillian used the words flexible and nimble. I feel like I use those adjectives all the time right now as well, um, just knowing that in terms of our guiding principles, we've really said we want to be responsive and humane and realistic. And so anything that we're doing right now, either to wrap up or to look ahead next to next year is being guided by those principles. Thank, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Kelly. Um, and thank you, Deborah. It, it, are there any further questions from the board for <clears throat> anyone? If there aren't, then I would suggest that we, let's just take five and um, do a quick recharge and come back at 7.12. At least that would be five minutes from now according to my computer clock. Um, any objections to doing that? Then. I think we have a quorum returned, very good. So um, here we begin 4.3, the finance committee section. Fleur, would you like to take the lead on this, please? Yeah, sure. So the finance 
for about one minute. There. So we, we had a, a short uh, agenda today, but I'm just gonna go over, I made a little list so I wouldn't take too much time. So the highlights uh, for today, uh, uh, first we, we're we doing the quarterly financial reports for those of you that have just joined the board uh, now. Uh, and then we're doing those in October, January, April, and June, like uh, Deborah said in her memo. I added those to our calendar. The only changes I added those to our calendar because they were not in our board calendar. Uh, we did not spend much time uh, going over this is the same issue that we had before. As you all know, we had Colleen Pritchett on balance, million dollars, 8,000, and at this point, point we can decide that we're going to wait for more a more comprehensive recommendation when we have more information from the state to decide how we're going to how we're going to proceed in the past we had uh, moved some of that money to capital and and decide how we use it but we're not going to do that until we know more one thing that we talked about was to add to this uh, to this line besides waiting that we as a board should take a look at the efficiency study both phase one, phase two that we have from March, literally five years ago, March 25th, 2015, and just uh, refresh and look at it. Uh, we talked about it informally, and I would like to hear from the board uh, as a whole if they're interested in, in doing that. I think it will help us with, uh, with planning. The, after that, uh, we talked about uh, let's see, early retirement. So we are going to discuss that as a, as a, as a board. We did had a, a pretty good uh, conversation on uh, what were the risks, what was what we were aiming uh, to, to save. And uh, do you want me to go? I'm asking, do, are you okay waiting until we have that conversation as a, as a board or do you want me to go over the numbers? Well, I think that if you wanted to talk about that in particular, um, perhaps we should just say that the Finance Committee moved to uh, per, um, support the administration's recommendation and recommend to this full board the early retirement program uh, that was presented. So would that make sense just as a study? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah we recommended that we move ahead with you guys planning and but we wouldn't make that, that a decision for the entire board as a recommendation, and we will talk about it as a, as a full board. Right. So, right. Um, and then moving uh, right along, uh, we talked about the summer meal uh, provision. The board, again, even though it is, uh, it was brought up to our attention that it's an $1,800 shortfall per day, uh, we know we know that we couldn't be do, everybody was in a in agreement that we couldn't be, there's nothing more important that we can be doing right now in supporting that. So we are recommending that they go ahead and look at what this will look like uh, through the through the summer in coordination with the calendar of community connections so that we're able to provide the meals for the kids. Uh, this operation is moving to East Montpelier uh, this summer so that you can continue to the work they need to get in, in their kitchen to bring in the kitchen up to code again. Yeah, no fiscal year. And then last but not uh, least, approve, we, we recommend the annual, if you had a chance to look at the questionnaire, that's something that we do every year. And we made that recommendation as a, as a board, the fiscal management questionnaire, everybody has to look through that. We tabled the energy project consultant just because we don't have candidates yet and we haven't had a chance to really uh, have a conversation with Bill Ford to and include him in, uh, in that conversation. So we table 4.1. And then in that metering, uh, we just had that conversation and the, and the board recommended uh, you, you were all part of that conversation. Last, uh, I think that, that, was, that was it because I gave you on, on that before. Any questions? Thank you very much. Any... Yeah, um, we will. Uh, some of um, some of these items we'll be addressing individually. So uh, we could maybe tackle questions at that point. Does that sound all right? Great. Um, so uh, four point three point one budget information. Um, is there anything uh, different 
in that page 15 from the last time we looked at it two weeks ago. It's basically no. the same. Okay, no. so it, it's essentially to um, refresh memories uh, and to, um, to keep in mind what, the, what at least appears to be our situation, given that everything is changing um, <clears throat> quite unpredictably. Um, 4.3.2, if there's nothing further on budget information. Um, proposal for early retirement, as Fleur was, was mentioning, if you go to page 20 of your packet, um, beginning on page 20 is, uh, is a lengthy memo. And what, um, what we're looking for, if, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, is a motion Uh, so if, if you go to page 22 under next steps, um, there are three recommendations. And would these need to be three separate motions or? No, they could be combined. They could be combined. Um, is, uh, is anyone interested in combining those motions formally? I will move that we uh, approve the three recommendations uh, from the Finance Committee on page 22 of the packet. Thank you, Jonas. Do we have a second? Second it, Diane. Diane seconds, thank you. Um, Lisa, uh, you know where we are and what uh, Jonas referred to the three recommendations. You see what those are? Yes, thank you. Okay, um, maybe we should read them out just to make sure that in case somebody who doesn't have the packet is watching will know precisely what we're saying. Jonas, would you mind reading Not at all, out? not at all. Uh, the, uh, the board would uh, make an, uh, the board would authorize a timetable for applications um, and offer to eligible staff no later than June 20th, 2020 with a deadline of September 15th, 2020. The board would authorize the parameters, including qualifications, uh, a combination of age plus years of service, uh, 15 or more equals 70 uh, or more for all contractual staff who meet this criteria uh, and authorizing the maximum number of slots available, 28 professional and related staff, 27 educational support and related staff, the total eligible would be 55 employees. Wonderful, thank you very much. And um, so we have you moving, um, Diane seconding, discussion. Stephen. So I'll take the stance I always take on early retirement. I don't think we can afford to do this particularly next year. Um, Stephen, I- We don't I, even know. We don't even know if the position, it looks like the position, yep. Turning off your Still camera. can't hear me? If you turn your yep. camera off, we probably can. Here we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. So um, I strenuously, strenuously oppose early retirement option. Um, it, in, unless someone can convince me it's going to save us money, it's going to cost us money. It's not going to save us money in the near term. And it's in the near term, we need to save money. I've, I've never seen an early retirement program that saved money. I can address that if you would Thank like, you, or someone from the committee, if they prefer. Do you like me to? No, you should, you should address that, Deborah, because we had a lengthy conversation about it, Stephen. Uh, so the, the thinking here is that um, there will be, we, uh, the, we're looking for opportunities to, uh, in the future, um, the fact that we will likely have to make reduction in force in this coming year. And um, we had a long discussion about the cost benefit of the early retirement plan and the savings. We felt it would be a humane way to reduce our staff, understanding we will need to do that. Uh, and as opposed to having to reduce our least staff, um, we know that from 
conversations that we've had with our principals that uh, there are some staff members who would likely take advantage of this and that um, with the retirement of uh, a number of individuals, we would be able to reduce those positions. In other words, through attrition, not rehire them. We came up with a scenario, one scenario for savings where if we, if 22 people, which is 40% of the total were to retire and four and positions were not filled, we would estimate 227,000 savings in FY 21-22. Uh, and again, this is all, this program is for 21-22 for budget planning for ahead for next year. 22-23, uh, 132,000 uh, status quo for 23-24. And then in 24-25, um, an additional 211,000. So overall, it's about over a half a million dollars in savings with just four positions unfilled. So if I'm, oh, uh, Diane, please. I, I'm kind of torn. I understand exactly why this, this makes sense and it's a natural attrition. But I also think that in this time and age where there's so many changing factors, is it a wise decision in the long run for us to get rid of, not rid of, that isn't what I'm, I'm not trying to say that that's what we're trying to do. But is it wise for us to encourage our most experienced teachers to be leaving when we actually might need the guidance of that as this change in landscape happens. So I get it. We're going to end up with needing some cuts. I just wonder if the cuts are in the right spot. So we did look at those individually uh, by and the principals feel that based upon who would be eligible that um, it would not be a significant challenge for them. And we can ask I know Stephen made a comment uh, or two in the finance committee meeting, and we could invite him back to do so. Also, about half of the number of people are professional and licensed professional staff, and the other half are ESP, uh, our support staff. Uh, so, with us, that was what comprises the total of 55 people. So, we felt that, again, um, looking for a humane way to reduce the staff in the future, that this was a better approach than riffing. We had a, a conversation about, I think it was Scott who shared some research that pointed out that when you do um, a major cut in your professionals or in, in all of your staff, that it has a, a very negative uh, result in morale. And, and this was some research you had said from the Great Depression. Is that right, Scott? Oh, no, the Great Recession, no. um, sorry, just sorry. very recently. No, quite all right. OK, sorry, recession. Uh, but I would offer, I know Stephen had made some comments. If you're still online, Stephen, um, could you make a comment or two? Yes, there you are. Yeah, so, um, so Diane, I really appreciate that consideration. It was the same thing. Um, Chris McVeigh brought up in the um, meeting as well is that we're going to lose people who we can't afford to lose um, at this time. I think that uh, when I look at U32, the U, I think we'll barely get 40% if we do get. Oh. You're muted, Stephen. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, um, so I, I think that um, we will have uh, more in our support staff, and those are positions that we would be looking at anyway in terms of reducing than we would from our teaching staff. And so I, I think it, when, when I look at U32, I think, uh, you know, I, I can be skeptical um, as uh, Stephen look about what happens with the staff because I've seen some in the past, but I think that this one makes some sense at this point in time. Some people with their hands up. Scott, you're you're muted, Scott. Chris, I'm sorry. Thank you. Chris, you're muted again. Chris, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. So Chris. Um, I see that there's there's a um, division between professional and related staff and uh, educational support and related staff. Um, is that a hard allocation of positions? 
so that there would be no more than 28 positions available for professional and related staff um, that would be eligible for this? Yes, based on the formula that's being recommended. 28 professional and um, 27 support. Okay. I made, I made the point at the Finance Committee that um, there is not, even with the numbers that are, are being provided, that it's basically less than 1% savings on a $30 million budget, which is actually a little less than what our, actually, our actual budget is. Um, and I am just not clear that losing the experienced uh, teachers um, that we will or administrators, because this applies to any contractual staff, administrative staff as well. Um, it just doesn't seem like a great enough savings to me. Um, so I, I was neutral on this. I just, um, you know, yeah, I'm torn. I just, I, I don't, I don't see a great upside in terms of savings on this program. Thank you. Others, um, uh, I see Fleur. I, I let uh, Lindy go first because I had my chance and then I'll go back if Good. Lindy can say what Thank I Thank you. Mean. Go ahead, Lindy. Um, I, those numbers seem really high when we've had it in the past. I don't remember it being that many that was it was offered to. And I also, um, I'm doubtful that the pe that people aren't replaced that will say we're going to save positions but it doesn't happen. And I've seen that in the past and I'm not a real fan of this because I think of a couple people who are retiring this year who certainly I feel could have did deserve some sort of bonus for all the work they put into the U32 community. And I, I just, I really have problems with the early retirement system and what Chris just pointed out when he does a percentage financially, first the numbers sound big but um, I'm not a real fan. Um, oh, Flora could go first if you want, then I can. I, I, why not, Flora? So, so what, what we talked, we, I, I think we were all came in into the meeting in the financial, uh, financial meeting skeptical, you know, with the questions, you know, what are the risks? What are the, uh, does it make sense to have so many? Why are we not capping it? And, and at the end, I think at least what convinced me, because I also come from the same experience that Lindy came, that it has never really saved us that much that much money. Does it make sense? But what was explained to, to me is what I put there that Lori had said to us, that the projected savings, when you start to look at it uh, year by year, it looks like we are going to save uh, uh, money that is not just uh, that is not just a wash because those numbers we did not have those numbers with us and then the other thing is that it seems that for Ralph from student administrators since the majority of budget is, is staff this would give them a tool to be able to address the budget issues that we're going to have but we did agree or at least I feel really strong that this should not be the only saving mechanism and that's sort of my interest being able to revisit the deficiency studies too. So I think both go hand in hand, you know, keeping in mind student outcomes uh, first, but uh, understanding that we have uh, a people is the majority of our, uh, of our budget. So how do we do this? Uh, I don't know what the right word is, humanely, humanly or humanely. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, I think we're always, people would always question whether we could actually follow through with a reduction. And I, I don't, you know, I can't see through the future. I don't have a crystal ball, but the projections for next year are quite dire uh, for planning into the future for budgeting. So the leadership team was fully supportive of this proposal because they liked the Many of the points that Flora made, they like the idea of having the flexibility to use this as a tool. Um, they also um, agreed that it would be, um, again, as mentioned before, an opportunity to make some decisions that could result in a reduced staff, but uh, do so without the pain of a reduction in force decision, uh, which as we all know, 
is really challenging and, and it has uh, long term effects. Diane. <laughs> The, the one thing that I'm seeing as an upside, especially in terms of planning around this, is the due date of September of 2020, so that it's before we're doing the budget, because I think then we would see whether or not we're seeing any of the responses that we're anticipating we might see, um, because I hear what you're saying in terms of that humane way. I just worry about the timing of it. But if we're doing it in early September, then we're going to know if that's where we're saving or not, and then it impacts the, the ripple toward other potential cuts. Although in September, we're also not going to, I don't believe we'll really know yet what our um, projections are. Well, we'll, we'll have, um, I'm not certain what the legislature will do. They may make some decisions by the end of the year, but we don't know for certain. Scott Jonas has his Jonas. Name. Yes. So, Jonas, please. Uh, a few uh, a few questions. Um, if we if we don't do this, will we have to riff staff? Is this a is it, this this is a trade off? And if we do this, will we end up having to riff staff anyway? Is there a chance that we would have to do that? And if we didn't do an early retirement plan and simply riffed staff, would we recognize significantly more savings? We would have to riff more staff if we did it without this program because of the relative variation in cost between a brand new lower seniority employee versus a long-term employee. Um, that we, we know that for, for sure. You could also do some by attrition, but if there was no one who left, that would not work. Uh, I think and that the, the question about the numbers is, we'll know in September how many people are going to proceed with it and that can inform budgeting and other decisions you may make about reductions or other savings. Um, uh, Diane, before I come to you, make sure that others have had a chance. Is there anybody else who, um, Jill, Marilyn, um, who am I missing? Jaya? Um, okay, so it, it appears that nobody else who hasn't yet spoken wishes to speak, so Diane? Yeah, and I apologize, I don't wanna hog it. Um, but I guess one thing you said, Deborah, that really concerns me, and I don't want this message going out from this board meeting, is that we have a plan on riffing staff. Um, I think we don't know yet what that looks like. I absolutely understand the dire nature of what we're having projected, but I do not want it being reported out of this board meeting that we have an understanding that our staff are going to be riffed. Um, because I, as a board member, we haven't even begun that fight um, for what we need for our, our um, schools and for our staff. So that's it. I won't talk anymore, I promise. And I don't, I'm not saying that that's a decision the board will make, but by having this um, as one of your strategies, you'll, it will make it easier in the event you reduce your staff in the coming year. And I, I can't predict what next year's budget planning will be like either. I don't know what uh, was going to be asked of us. Um, I think we've all read the news. We know that there's not just the dire predictions, but some very specific recommendations are being uh, that are being floated from the governor's office, like possibly revoting budget for this coming year, and uh, the comments about how it will be multiple years before the revenue shortfall is made up in the Ed Fund. So. Um, I guess making an educated assumption about the fact that we will need to reduce the budget um, is the reason why this has been brought forward. But certainly by no means would I ever say on your behalf that the board plans to reduce the staff next year. But 75% of your budget is staff. So it's it was it would be something you'd have to consider at the at a future time. Hey, I, Stephen and Chris have both indicated their desire to say something, but um, if there's anybody else who hasn't yet spoken, um, it, you go first. Otherwise, Stephen and then Chris. My internet chat is too bad. I don't think you guys will be able to hear me. I, I, I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. Yeah. 
great, I'll Chad. Try. You, it, it's all yours. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel comfortable um, voting to remove staff on just a proposal, and um, I feel like we need to get further along in this before we make decisions about cutting positions. Yeah, that's not that's not what we're doing, though. JL. Is this okay? So this wouldn't be if we voted tonight. It wouldn't be um, set in stone. Could we revise it if things seem to be so, improving quicker? So here's what it would be. It would be that the retirement program would be in place, but the decision as to whether you replace people is yours to make in for the coming year is yours to make when the budget is prepared next fall. Um, so I'm really glad you pointed that out because if that's, I'm sorry if that wasn't clear, but we talked about how once we knew the numbers who might retire, that the leadership team review the final list and based upon your goals and targets for the budget, they would make recommendations to you yeah. about yeah. how um, budget, how um, many positions might not be refilled and um, or, you know, and again, that would be yours to make and it's a future decision, not a decision for tonight. Okay, um, thank you very much. Uh, before we go to Stephen, anybody else who hasn't yet spoken? Okay, Stephen. Oh, Jill, Jill, I'm so sorry, Stephen. I that's okay. Hi, everybody. I just had a, I'm wrestling with this. So I just had a question, which is, Deborah, when you say the leadership team, I'm just, does that mean the uh, you and Lori? Does that mean you and Lori and the principals? I just wanted to understand who we're talking about. Sure. All of us, all the principals. And okay. Central office team, all the central office team and Brian Olkowski, and I forgot to mention that. We talked about that in the finance committee. We had a meeting and Brian joined us. And he, okay. also, he also favored this proposal. You're in, okay. you know, that's very, yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so I think finally, Stephen. So I, I appreciate and understand that it represents a humane way if 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 we need to reduce staff we suspect we need to reduce staff and in order to give us the option to reduce staff when we begin developing the budgets we potentially so i'm looking if 50 percent accept the offer we're paying 50 percent of the salary for 22 people for three years no matter what decision we make if we refill those positions, we're, and I know it's frequently mentioned that they can be refilled with less experienced staff, uh, and, and that will likely happen a little bit. But if you look at the hiring practices across our supervisory union, our district, whatever we're called now, um, we typically hire the most qualified people that we can get. We typically hire people with a lot of experience. So we don't save money. And my concern is we're investing 50% of salary in one year health insurance in X number of people to give us flexibility in the future that we may or may not need and that we may or may not hire people back for. Um, and for me, it's too much of a financial investment for the flexibility. Everyone can disagree. It's okay. I always qualify my statements. I can be the only no, but I've heard nothing to convince me otherwise. Just wanted to make a clarifying point. May I, Scott? Yes, Deborah. Uh, you talked about 50% of salary over three years. It's not 50% each year. It's 50% spread over three years. So it's a third each year. Okay. That's, um, it's, I hope that was clear. That was spelled out on, on page 21 of your memo. And Stephen, I'm not trying to disagree or, or uh, I just wanted to make it clear because it, it made it, it was a little unclear in the way you said it. And I wasn't sure if you were aware that that's a one-time 50% payment spread over three years. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. And Chris. Um, so two points. Once um, I think that once we offer this and people accept it, we're bound. 
we cannot rescind the offer that was made would be my understanding. So if come September, um, there's a fourth stimulus package that um, sends money out to municipalities like ourselves and fills budget uh, deficits, we're not undoing, we cannot undo this offer. Uh, you make an offer, teacher accepts it, um, we're bound, we're bound by it. Um, the savings that have been explained only come from not filling positions, not from rehires, not from the rehires of the positions we are filling is what I understood, that the savings is going to come from keeping positions vacant, not by the individuals who are being hired back into the positions. Um, so, you know, I, I think, again, I, I'm, I'm just not, I don't see great benefit to this program, and I see greater loss in terms of talent. Deborah? Um, Thank you. So, so I think, you know, your statement about the, um, the loss of talent, um, I think we've, we've tried to address that before. Um, there are 57% of our teaching staff that are at the upper levels of the salary schedule. Uh, so with looking at this smaller number of um, about half of this total and anticipating that not all of them would take it and the fact that they're spread over the entire district as opposed to a single school, um, in addition to that, the comments that were made by the administration administrators earlier that they feel that this would be, um, you know, a, you know, would provide them with a tool and uh, an opportunity to make adjustments if needed in the staffing. Um, it, I, I do agree that uh, until you know the individuals and their total salaries and benefit, it's impossible to predict the actual cost or benefit, excuse me, um, savings. But what we did was to take a look at the entire group of 55 people and averaged out what the savings were. Uh, but you, you're correct. It could, if it's, you know, there's a range of people in the upper levels as well. Um, this year we have hired, um, gosh, I don't know if it's been, we haven't hired anyone at the top of the scale. Uh, and I, I'm guessing that we have hired people between the first and first half the top 50%, uh, and recently a number at the very beginning of our scale um, in terms of teachers. So I don't know your past experience with that, and you're right, Chris, we are looking for the most qualified candidate, but that's the, uh, I, I don't have the statistics with me, but I can say for sure that it's not been at the top of our teacher scale. Uh, it's been within the lower half of the scale, so. Okay, uh, I see Fleur has her hand up. I'm wondering if Lori could explain what is the difference uh, between what we used to do and how we're doing it now, because I think that at least for, for Lindy, Stephen, and me, we have done it in the past, and it was not always, you know, it didn't save money. So I think there's a little bit of confusion of why this is different from before, besides the humanely uh, stuff. So having, sure. you know, the humanely way of getting, giving us options. Okay. Um, so when um, this had been offered considerably um, over the, a lot of years, this um, option was given to people and primarily the people that were on the list had a bachelor's degree. And for this particular list, most of the people are, as Deborah mentioned, at the very top of the scale. So that's where the savings would come because you wouldn't necessarily hire everybody at the highest paid um, cell on the teacher grid. And then the same goes for the ESP. Most of the people that are eligible to retire are at the top of the scale. Um, if you think about it, it makes sense because the scale goes to 15 years of experience plus. So that's why um, there would be a greater savings over time because you would, chances are you're gonna hire somebody at the middle of the grid on average. And we have been doing that. So I used actual information to calculate these averages. And I guess, does that answer your question, Floor? Yeah, and it's still a little confusing. I, I was looking about what what is the difference between back then and now, and it sounds like you're saying it's the same way that we did it bef before. Right. So we were hire we were having people retire before at let's just say a fifty thousand dollar salary, and we were hiring people at a fifty thousand dollar salary, so it would cost you more. 
right now, a lot of the people on the list are at the $74,000 salary. So when we go to fill those positions on average, it's currently been on average about $55,000 salary. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> Lindy. I couldn't find my cursor because I've got two screens on. Um, what's confusing me is it used to be we threw a net out. If somebody was interested, they did it. It wasn't, it's sounding almost like you guys have named names to these 28 and 27 people. And the other part that- hmm? Only because they fall into this category of 15 to, to make that 70 number. 15 years of experience, so they're identifiable, but not shared with the board or, you know, just by by individual administrator where they might fall. So it isn't, it's a confidential list. Excuse me for interrupting, Lindy. I'm sorry. Oh, that's, the, um, the other part, I mean, this is way more than we've ever done because it seems like when it happened, it'd be school by school and it might be one or two people. Um, I'm also, I'm still not comfortable with it at all because I, I don't think it will be attrition. We're also, I feel, rushing as to whether or not what Chris was pointing out, another package comes in or things aren't as dire as we're seeing in order to give people 90 days, which all I can say is if you're already thinking about retiring and you hear now I get this money for three years, okay, I'll do it now. Um, it, I won't need 90 days because I was already on the fence about whether or not to retire. So I, I'm feeling like there's not a big, this June 1st, so they have till September 15th. We won't, well, we'll start, but our real budgeting stuff doesn't get pretty exciting until the October, November-ish time. So I'm not feeling this huge push for the 90 days and nice. getting this and saying yes and being signed on to it. So. It's, it's not something I'm going to support. Okay, Lori? Um, just wanted to let you know that the retirement office is working off-site currently. So it has taken some of our staff who are retiring this year weeks and even a month or more for them to return their calls. So I think that was why uh, the 90-day recommendation came to pass because it's really difficult for employees to contact the retirement office and to get the financial questions answered. Okay, um, I think we should probably move to a vote at this point. Um, just to, it, it, again, I hope I'm not garbling this, but if I understand the arguments in favor are primarily um, based on the assumption that we're going to get hammered and that if we're gonna be losing people, um, then we should try to balance it rather than get, rather than lose, you know, the younger, cohort of our staff. Um, the arguments against uh, are that doubt that it will save money and um, concern that we will lose some of our most experienced people. Um, that's at least what I've been registering. Um, so are, are you ready for a vote? Okay, uh, all in favor, click yes. All opposed, click no. Okay, I see, um, I see, okay, uh, let, me, let me just run through and make sure I've got this straight. I have myself as a yes, Chris as a no, Jill as a yes, um, Diane as a yes, Dorothy as a yes, Jael as a no, Jonas as a yes, Kari as a yes, Lindy as a no, Marilyn as a yes, um, Stephen Look as a no, and that's all I've got. It looks as though the yeses have it. Um, did anybody count better than I did those? 
I, I got as a majority of yes as well. Okay. All right. So the motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Great discussion. <gasps> Oops, sorry, my dog. Should I put in the middle <laughs> how many people voted yes and how many voted no? Oh, um, you don't usually, do you? Yes. Oh, you do? Yes. You say who voted yes and who voted no? Uh, I'm yeah. just saying maybe how many the the names. Yes. Oh. So let me, uh, if I count the yeses, tell me if I'm I, wrong. I wrote down seven yes, four no. Yeah, that's what I got. So, so you can say, yes, yeah, certainly say however you'd like, but seven yeses and four noes is what we tallied, I believe. Does that Great. <clears throat> yeah, that looks right. Okay. okay, thank you very much. And thanks for that um, clarification, Lisa. Wait, sorry. I'm sorry. My dogs are being crazy right now. What what was what were the numbers? Seven yes, four, no. Seven yes. Seven and four. Yeah. Thanks. Wait, wait, I, I'm wait, happy wait, that it's wait, it's wait. not just my Dor children. How, how did Dorothy vote? Yes. Dorothy voted yes. And I have eight yeses. Oh. Ah. Well, do you want to go back and look again? There still there might still be up there unless we cleared off. One, two, three. I tried to write them down as you were saying them. Uh, Jonas is correct. Yeah. It's eight yeses. Eight yeses and three no's? No. Four no's. Um, and yeah. three no's. Three no's? I thought it was four. I thought it was four as well. Uh, yeah, Stephen Luke was a no as well. So it was four yes. no's. Okay, so Lisa, did you hear us? Thank you, Eight yeses, four no's. And I apologize for the wrong number before. Quite yes. all right. Thank you. Thanks very much, everyone. All right, so um, annual fiscal management questionnaire. Uh, Fleur mentioned this as well, page 24 of your packet. Um, we need a motion to uh, approve this and I will, if I remember correctly, I will sign off on this. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Scott, and I think Dorothy has had her hand up for a little while. Oh my Are goodness, you? thank you, Jael. Dorothy, uh, Apologies. You're, you're muted, Dorothy. Let me see if I can unmute you. Um, I, I, it was a mistake. Oh. <laughs> I, I wasn't waving for attention. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> I wasn't waving to speak, maybe for attention. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, thank you, Jael, too. I, I, everybody, please help me out if I miss someone. It's not intentional at all. Um, the fiscal management questionnaire, uh, I would welcome a motion for, oh, Floor is moving that the board approve the annual fiscal management questionnaire as um, you see it on page 24 and 25. And Chris seconds, thank you. Um, any discussion? Um, sorry. Does anybody want to say anything? If not, we can go straight to a vote. Uh, all in favor, please click your yes button, opposed your no button. And <clears throat> looks like all, all yeses. Thank you very much. Great. OK, next. Um, Summer meal provision, page 26, there is, um, okay. So the action here is, leading question. Laura, did you want to summarize it or would you like me to? Yeah, we the the motion really is to authorize them to to go ahead in the planning for the summer meals at East Montpelier to serve our district for in coordination with the community uh, connections calendar. Excellent. Um, so, uh, are you making that motion, Floor? Sure. Great. Uh, second. I'll second. Jael seconds, thank you. All right, uh, discussion. Uh, I'm sorry, Flora, can you repeat the motion? Um, 
Sure, it's to give. I, I, mean, I didn't write it. I didn't write it down, and we do have a motion that uh, because I was running the meeting that Tiffany wrote, but is to authorize the administration to proceed in the planning for summer meal in coordination with the community connections calendar to take place at East Montpelier for the duration of the summer. Sorry, what'd you say about East Montpelier? Location will be at East Montpelier. Okay, thanks. Great, thanks. Um, discussion. Lindy. I just have a question about during the school time, it's been a door to door and maybe that part isn't planned yet, but I was curious in the summer, it's not generally a door to door distribution. We are, we're, well, first of all, um, thank you for that question. The first point to make is that typically in the summer, we've been offering 200 meals per day. Uh, now we're offering 1400 meals per day. And we're going to be surveying parents to see if they are in need of a, or would desire additional or continuing meals in the summer. Uh, and uh, if they require transportation or if they can pick up. So we'll, we'll fill, work out those details after we receive their feedback. <coughs> so we don't know yet, but the question is, has been raised and we uh, hope to get further clarity. So for example, if we only are asked to prepare 800 meals, we'll prepare for the staff to do that and food, et cetera. So we'll, we'll follow the, the numbers of people who request the support. And we talked in the meeting about, the finance meeting about how the AOE is not requiring this, but we do have the capacity and we feel that it's a very important um, service to provide, it's especially in these challenging times when folks are so many more people have been seeking uh, food support from the school. Scott. Kari has his hand up, Scott. And you're muted. I'll just take, I'll just take it. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to um, really appreciate the staff. It sounds like they've been just doing amazing work um, providing 13 to 1400 meals per week. And as Deborah says, with the Vermont Food Bank is reporting a 100% increase in demand of their uh, services. And it just seems, seems so important that we're doing this. And that whether or not we approve this, I hope we will, um, I, th I think we might think about as a board uh, communicating this a little more to the community because I'm not, I'm not sure that everyone is aware of all the good work that we're doing now and hopefully into the summer. Thank you, and I second that, and thanks so much to all of our staff, um, Jody Emerson, Michelle Sepka, and so many support staff, and all of our food service workers have been working every day, and we have been working at about 1,400 meals per day, um, not per week, but I just wanted to be sure you were aware of that. that's what we've been doing. Yeah, that's great. Stephen. Um, I, I appreciate, similar to what Kari said, all the good work. I, I just don't understand. I have no clue what I'm voting on. So we have in the past, through our community connections program, we've been running, we've run a child care type of program, and we plan to do that this summer um, for four weeks in the month of July. Uh, we would like to offer meals to our families in co coinciding with particular time period uh, because we will have the staff in place to to prepare and deliver and or offer for pickup um, and um, we don't have the all of the details because we're still waiting we will be waiting for responses from parents and um, uh, also to final information about costs there may be more cares money uh, that can be applied to this um, but we feel that it's, you know, based upon our current circumstance, it's, it's a very worthy cause and we'd like to continue to provide it. When, during those periods of the, of the summer, there will be about five to six weeks of time when we will not be providing the service. And that will be, you know, we're going to be working closely with Hunger Free Vermont 
and other providers to ensure that that gap is, we attempt to make up that gap of time. So I, I'm understanding the motion is that we continue the current um, program of providing food to the families in the district through the end of July or is in, in conjunction with the community connections program, which will be for um, the month of July. All right, that gives me a better idea. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for asking. We did have a longer discussion about it and hadn't made the decision, made it clear this time. Sorry, Lindy, I have a question. Yeah, Lindy. Um, well, so I just want a clarification because it sound, I thought the motion was just to continue planning. The floor so, is nodding. <clears throat> not to have a program. I'm not saying we don't, shouldn't have a program, but the motion was to continue planning in the event we have a program. I, when when we talk in the finance committee is that we didn't want to deploy resources and and people's efforts into into this. So if you know if definitely if it was if I understood this right from Debra and and Lori and from the documents that we got, if it's like you know really crazy, we would definitely come back. This is not that the last time that this conversation is happening at the board level, but this also rises them to move ahead because there's so many unknowns. Uh, yet, but that is at least a heads up that the board is interested in providing this uh, service to our community. And I would imagine we would all want to support that. We can bring back more detailed information to the next meeting. We hope to have the details worked out by that time, but we wouldn't want to invest our state time if we want to be interested in um, putting funds in for this. Hey, Chris. So just to um, address Lindy's uh, concerns. I think the motion is for planning and funding. So they're linked, uh, you know, is, is my impression. So we're talking about funding the the ongoing food program. Is that right? I believe that what we're saying is finding ways to make this possible, giving them the opportunity to go out and look at how do we make this, what we're doing right now, make it happen through the summer. And when they have more information and we have a plan, because there's a lot of unknowns that we can use the CARES money, there's a lot of options, they will come back to us. But we're basically saying, how can we, uh, the way I see it is, how can we as a board make this happen through the summer? Please do some planning. Okay, so we're not talking about funding then. We're just talking about um, directing the administration to go out and do planning as to how it can be funded, and if need be, come back to us for funding. Well, we, we know that there's not an, an alternative way of funding. So how do we make this happen? What would we need to make this happen? What kind of money? Well, why don't we ask Lisa to read back the, the yeah. motion as it is? OK, also, I didn't get a second. So I've gotten a lot of the discussion, but I didn't get who seconded it. But anyway, the motion was that Floor moved to authorize the administration to proceed in the planning of the summer meals program in coordination with the community connections program calendar with the location in East Montpelier. Great. Um, and uh, I no longer remember who seconded it. Um, would someone like to step yeah, ex post facto? Jael, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Good. So um, would you like to move to a vote then? All right, all in favor of, and Lisa, would you, how about, would you mind one more time reading the motion just to make sure everybody is clear on the language? Sure. Um, to authorize the administration to proceed in the planning of the summer meals in coordination with the Community Connections Program calendar with the location at EMES. Good, okay, thank you very much. So all in favor, green button, all opposed, red, no button. And I'm seeing green all the way through. Okay, thank you everybody. Now, um, <clears throat> 4.3.5 energy project consultant, Floor um, mentioned this as well, Floor, would you like to do the honors? 
Uh, sure. So as uh, as we table this uh, this item in our agenda because we don't we don't have a consultant in mind and we want to coordinate with Bill Ford, who we have hired uh, already as eighty percent to coordinate our facility work. So at the next uh, facilities uh, if, uh, finance meeting, we will be looking at options to hire a consultant for the energy consultant to help us look at options similar to net metering, uh, not directly at net metering, but how can we uh, make our schools more green? So that's, that's where we left it. I don't think we need to elaborate too much into it. I think we all agree that we wanted to have an energy consultant in Deborah also came, got some names that potentially could be cost free, but we don't, we don't know yet. So we want to come back to you with more information when we have concrete numbers and potential people. Great. Thank you very much. So um, we have, uh, it, it, there, it, we're right about time for a break. Uh, Jonas, should we do ESP first and then have a break before policy? Um, would that be? Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't have a whole lot to say. Um, you know, again, uh, last Monday we had a uh, a productive and collegial uh, meeting with the union representatives. Unfortunately, a number of them had internet connection difficulties, and we had to end it um, before I think all of us wanted to. Uh, but we're looking into options for. Um, you know, some people on the union side uh, felt comfortable having an in-person meeting. Uh, some people in the larger negotiating group were not comfortable with that. So uh, with Deborah's help, um, we're looking at options for, uh, you know, a limited in-person session um, or uh, uh, you know, a larger room or uh, to have people in separate rooms um, you know, in a school building, you know, masked and you know, everything that we can do. Um, we don't have any tentative agreements yet, um, although we are moving the ball down the field on a number of things. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm confident that there's, you know, a, you know, goodwill and understanding and that we will get this done. That's great. Thank you very much. So um, how about five minutes before we tackle the, uh, the policy block, um, which is the, the major thing tonight? Um, come back at 8.15. Everybody okay with that? Great. Okay, if I can call everybody who might be uh, masked, but still listening. Great. Wonderful. All we see is of Chris McVeigh is his house plant. Ren and Mela are waiting in the wings, but they actually want to say hi to Sorsha. <laughs> and and not to Mr. McVeigh. I'm sure they will. Hey, Chris, the girls wanted to say good night. A limited they, limited they, appearance here for Sorsha Anderson. They really want to say <laughs> hi to Sorsha. <laughs> How are you doing? When are we going to visit? I when? <laughs> Maybe we'll social distance and have a good night, car. you guys. She said good night. Good night. <laughs> We have to we have to put these Zoom so, opportunities so, to every Scott. use we can. Yes, Chris. So I have to learn how to use this chat because when you um, made the motion for the um, teacher retirement, I sent you a chat. I wanted to send you a chat that said, is hammered a neutral word? I have the chat fixed it so you can't send these private chats. <laughs> I got to Deborah. I know, Deborah. right now we can only privately chat you as far as I can see. Uh, I just did that because we were- Yeah, that's right. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how to do it. Yeah, I just did that because it's a public record and I wanted you to be aware of that. So anyone who's on the call can read what you what you write in there. It's unless you send it privately, which some of you do to each other. So we could have a discussion about that later, I suppose. And I can, you know, it's just, just up to you guys how you want to do it. So then are you reading all that? Will you read your comments are are going are you had mentioned some people had mentioned before that they should be part of the public record and some of the comments you may or may not want in the public record. So 
it's up to you, but. Um, well, well, you can have me too, but the dogs are oh. on the floor. Oh. You should eat them. Okay. They're still good. So, okay. but I, I think, I do think that needs to have a, a decision. Um, I don't. I don't know that any of us. I mean, maybe privately, people were saying some things to themselves, which the host can always see and should be part of the public record. But I think we should decide if there are. Um, we want that we identify. We're aware it is the public record, and whether or not we do want the chat. Otherwise, the chat should just be disabled. I think. It is disabled except to Deborah, where she could then tell us what it is. Yeah, that's how it is right now. But maybe we could talk about that at the agenda mm -hmm. meeting. Yeah, we, we can we can do that. Um, we still have a fair that that's a that would be a fun discussion. But um, first, we have to get the work done and then we can have the fun. Um, so uh, ready to move on to 4.5 policy. Chris, would you like to introduce tonight's Contestants. Sure, we have a we have a, a number of policies to uh, consider. The first one is second reading. Well, first thing we can do is a slate, I think. Second reading of B three, which is the alcohol and drug free workplace policy, and C one, which is a student education records uh, policy, and also number C four, limited English proficiency student policies. And they start on page thirty two. So we'll take up take them up one at a time, but both of them as a slate. Um, okay. Unless someone so, has an objection to that. Um, I, I certainly have no objection. If someone would like to make a motion to that effect. This is Steve. Uh, Look, I'd make a motion uh, to approve the second reading of B three, C one, and C four. Excellent. Thank you, Stephen. Second. I'll second. Dorothy seconds. Great. All right. Go ahead, Chris. So in. Uh, in B3, um, we made um, some um, changes to address the issue of, um, of, of the influence of someone being under the influence of drug. And we ended up um, going back to just look at the changes that we made. Um, and we, we think it covered the sense of where the board was um, concerned about use of drugs and impairment, even for prescription medications. And, um, how that could be addressed um, on the school property. Any board member comments or questions on this? Okay. Continue, Chris. Um, okay. Um, C1, no, no changes. We basically kept it as is. Does any member have a question on C1 as it is currently written? And C4 um, is basically the same. Uh, no changes made there either. Any, any questions before we go to a vote? Okay. Let's go to a vote then. All in favor of um, approving the slate of policies as moved by Stephen and um, seconded by, oh, Dorothy. Um, please click green yes. Opposed, click red no. And I see all green. Great, okay, they pass on second reading, nice. Please continue. Okay, so, so first up we have um, a slew of policies for first reading. Um, and and I, I would propose that we just go through them one by one and see if anyone has um, any comments or concerns. And then at the very end, move them as a slate with any proposed changes um, or, or suggestions. Just to move to for the board to for the policy committee to reconsider them. So first up is C2. And the significant change there was we in the definition of drugs, we added in an educational component or at least emphasized the educational component involving drug use and abuse.
Chris, I had a comment about that one. It, it struck me as odd where you put that, and it and I thought maybe it would work better down under the section labeled uh, annual report, since it is an annual report. That's that sounds like a fine comment to me. Any questions about that or any concerns about that? Sorry, what was that comment, Kari? I missed. Is the suggestion to move the additional language to the the section sub subsection called annual report? Okay, uh, next, any other comments before I move on to C3? Okay, so C3 deals with transportation. Um, it's, it's basic policy that we've had and have no significant, no changes at all that were proposed. Okay, so we'll move on then to C5. Uh, which is the weapons and firearm policy. No significant changes proposed or recommended. I seem to remember there was some conversation in the previous meeting about uh, def making definitions here between, you know, uh, U32 and elementary violations of this policy by students. Um, that's not necessarily something I was in favor of, um, but am I, am I misremembering? Uh, yeah, I, 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 um, if I'm not, then forgive the digression. I, say, I, don't, we'll, I don't remember that we. Right no, 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 no. I think you're probably right, but I don't I think, think we it's discussed ringing that. A bell, at the, yeah. at the yeah, the, there used to be different policies for U32 and, and different policies among the elementary schools. But I, I think is, the is they, idea is to make them, is to kind of um, unify them. Well, there is, but sometimes one size does not fit all. Um, does the board have a sense as to whether or not this may be one of those policies where we should try and differentiate between U32 um, and elementary schools? What was the specific change, I'm sorry, Justice, that you were looking to make on this policy? I'm not looking to there make any change, not at all. In, in, in fact, you know, under, uh, you know, part A, you know, the circumstances where the board may modify expulsion, um, you know, I think that that probably covers, you know, all but the craziest edge cases of what we would see, you know, even from elementary students. This is not a, this is not a zero tolerance you know, bring a jackknife to school and you're expelled, period, policy. Are you on C2 or am I, I'm sorry, which one are you on? Aren't we on weapons and firearms? Yes, C5. C5. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry, I apologize, my, my mistake. Okay. No, I think that this policy is uh, appropriate and, and well-crafted. I was just uh, checking to make sure that, you know, if there was someone's concern out there that that it didn't get lost in the shuffle. I think that there was a quite, there's, there's been a change in um, discipline approaches that's been, um, gosh, it's hard to describe this in a quick nutshell, but at one point we had all moved, many school districts had moved to zero tolerance. Is this what you're referring to, Jonas? And as opposed to uh, discretion around expulsions and there's been a lot of case law around that too uh, so if there's something here that you think we should amend i to I, I, I do i do not see that no I, again i think the policy is is appropriate and well crafted and i would support it okay so just be aware that there's a distinction between dangerous weapon and firearm in terms of expulsion and the under firearm it is a shall mandatory expulsion um, so 
the may the may does create discretion in terms of a dangerous weapon uh, but I, I i read the shall as uh well it still gives the board yeah some some uh leeway but it's just anyway there's there's a different, definitely a different emphasis in terms of the firearm because it uses the stronger mandatory shall and there, you know, there, so, there are there are plenty um, of opportunities. Not change. No, there are Go plenty ahead. of opportunities for you know the for the board's discretion. Chris, can you just Great. point me okay. to the shell that you're looking at? I just want to make sure I'm tracking. If look at part, part A. Okay. Um, I believe it's in part A. Um, Is uh, or um, it after, says after the student hearing. is found by the board to have brought shall be expelled, whereas up above talking about a, a dangerous weapon says may expel. I see it's the very last line on the first page. Yep. I think. Um, you're suggesting oh, but then then the next page is the modifying language. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other? Yeah, I feel like that's a pretty big modification of the shall. So, okay. I think I'm comfortable with this okay. too. Uh, next up is um, C6 on uh, home study students. No proposed change there. Any questions on C6? C8 uh, deals with uh, pupil privacy rights. No proposed change in the current policy there. I think we missed C7. Did we? Yeah, you missed attendance. Page um, 50. I did? Oh, sorry. Well, C7, though, oh, I'm sorry. is C7. warned. Let's go back to C7. Yeah. But we're not voting on it, right? These are all first reading that we're in right now. No. Yeah, okay. Oh, I see. They're all the same. Okay, sorry. Any questions on C7? Hearing none, we'll move on to C8. Pupil privacy rights, no proposed change. Question? Um, C10, uh, the prevention of harassment, hazing, and bullying policy, which has um, extensive um, procedures attached to it and definitions. Um, no proposed changes to this either. No comments. We'll move on to uh, C eleven student freedom of student freedom of expression in school sponsored media. Only minor changes, uh, striking supervisor union and just enrolling in the district, clarifying where it applies. Um, 
Any comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to C30 in terms of student medication. No proposed changes for this policy. Next up is um, C, uh, C32 involving 18 year old students. No proposed changes for it. So having run through our slate, um, is there a motion? Yeah. Well, we don't need a motion, just first reading, right? It's first reading, yeah. So, so we'll bring them back for second reading at our next meeting. Fantastic. We'll all again. Well done. Policy committee is um, quite impressive. All the committees are, but you all have been cranking through these at a um, at an impressive rate. Um, okay. Well, Deborah has Deborah has a little bit of a whip. It's <laughs> done by the end of the year. <laughs> yeah, it looks like everything is sunshine and and um, and flowers in the field behind her. But but yeah, uh, we know how it really is. Okay. So um, thank you, everyone. Moving on to 5.1, approving the minutes of May 6th um, that start on page 93. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? Lindy moves, second. Jonas seconds, and Jael yawns. Um, just happened to notice that. Um, <clears throat> OK, any changes to those minutes? Do they look good to you? If so, then let's move to a vote. All in favor, please click your yes button, no, your red no button. Great, looks like all green. Um, minutes are approved. Now, um, for the board orders, does anybody happen to have them up um, and can make a motion with the, um, with the correct numbers to them, please? I'll move that we approve board orders in the amount of $258,254.11 and in the amount of $6,156.91. Wonderful, thank you. Is there a second, please? Floor seconds. Any questions about the board orders that we received? Um, if not, if, uh, if we could all please go to vote. Green, yes. Red, no. Great, it looks like all green from what I can see. Wonderful, thank you very much. Um, okay, um, now we have the personnel, uh, hires, resignations, retirements. As I recall, these are in an email. Um, am I remembering correctly? Yes, uh, in the same email on 515, in which you received the board packet. Um, so I can, I can read them aloud if you would like. Or would you like to wait a moment for people to gather the cutlery? Um, sure. Uh, how uh, we can we move to um, to hire the the slate of candidates? Well, there's some hiring. There's resignation, and there's. Did you mean yes. just do each little bit yeah, at a time? Yeah, do each little bit at a time. Yeah, okay. each Thanks. separate action is at a time. <clears throat> if someone would like to move the hirings. Want a couple of these? I can do that. Do you want me to read them? Um, sure, if you could, please. Um, the new hirings are test press stage for a U32 position, Patty Abraham for a Berlin position, Danielle 
Jesmonth for a Berlin position. Very good. Um, that's correct. Yes, Deborah? Yes. Okay. Recommend approval. Um, so we have Lindy moving. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second. Um, okay, uh, Jael, uh, I'll go with Jael. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Any Anything we need to know about these people, Deborah? Well, we're excited to welcome all of them. Um, as you can see from the nominating papers that follow, uh, they come to us with uh, advanced degrees and uh, some ex so in some cases, some experience. Um, all have been uh, vetted by their hiring committees and their respective schools and strongly recommended. Uh, I interviewed all of them via Zoom as well, and um, we're very pleased to welcome them. Wonderful. Um, so, if uh, is there any question from board members? Any um, further discussion? If not, we can. Uh, go to a vote. All in favor of the hirings as presented by Lindy and seconded by Jael, please click your yes button. At no, uh, red no button. And I see all yeses. So um, the hirings carry. Um, next up, uh, resignations or resignation, I should say. No. Um, I don't have it in front of me. What what is the um, what is the actually retirement? Retirement. 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 Okay. John Fish from Callis. Yes. Um, would someone like to move that the board approve John Fish's retirement? I move the board approve John Fish's retirement. Okay, Jonas moves, and um, who? Uh, uh, this is Jail. I'll second. Uh, well. Yeah, and okay. Dorothy also offered to second. If you wanted, we have a uh, we have a, an embarrassment of riches in the seconds department, <laughs> um, but that's that's great. Uh, well, um, Jonas moves, Jill seconds, um, and uh, John Fish has uh, done great service over the years. Um, so we wish him well. Is there any any further discussion? before we go to a vote. If not, all in favor, please click your yes button and no red button. Okay, I see all the yeses. Thank you very much. And um, further personnel actions yes. under this? Two resignations, Alexandra Morse. Uh, oh. Our Callis and East Montpelier art teacher has resigned, and Deborah Gale, our, our Triple E teacher working in Berlin, uh, also resigned, and there are other opportunities. We will miss yeah. them. Yeah. Um, thank you. So, do we have a motion to accept those resignations? So moved. Floor moves. I'll second. Jaila uh, seconds. Uh, any further discussion? I love that we live in a place where someone can just put their first name on a retirement form and we know who she is. <laughs> That's, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> um, all right, all in favor of approving these resignations, please click your yes button. No, click your red no button. And I, I see all yeses once again. Um, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. So um, future agenda item. Oh, are there any more personnel actions before I take mm -mm. off? OK. Excellent. OK. So future agenda items. Um, does anybody have anything? Uh, Diane. So I'm wondering, based on the little the subgroup that puts together some ideas around teacher appreciation, if there is potentially a request for monies to be considered, does that need to go on the agenda tonight, or how does that work? Um, uh, floor. 
I, I think we, I think we can if we have information for the planning agenda meeting. I think we could incorporate that, but I I, I don't think it hurts to say that you we want to have teacher appreciation on the next meeting, and if we need to table it, we need to table it, and then we can take action. Okay, sounds good. All right, is that is that good with you, Diane? Okay, um, Joe. No, I'm just yawning. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's I, been a long day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost sorry well, about this that. Part, this part, amazingly, is almost um, is almost. Just, yeah, let's not let's not count our chickens. Let's just. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay. Um, so if we're done with future agenda items, um, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discuss discussing. Uh, employee evaluation, personnel matter. Um, would anyone? So moved. Thank you, Jill. Second? Floor seconds. Okay. All in favor, please click your yes or your no if you're opposed. And um, I see all yes. So I would propose that we go in with Deborah. Um, so as of now, we're in executive session with Deborah. Well, and I will put you into your breakout room, okay? Very uh, good. And w before uh, before I go, uh, there may be uh, I don't know there may be a vote, um, but uh, Jonas will be able to relay relay that to Lisa. So Lisa, um, you may enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Uh, all the rest of you, too, may enjoy the rest of your evenings. Um, those of you who aren't joining us, who I hope enjoy that anyway. Okay. Um, so is there anything else before we, um, before we bid one another farewell and adjourn for the night? Scott, this is Steve. Yes, um, please. For the for the record, there should be a notation that we came out of executive session with no action taken. Thank you so much, Stephen. The, the The minutes will reflect that during executive session, the board discussed personnel evaluations and did not take any action um, after that discussion. Yeah. Because because no action is noted, I don't think it's necessary to note the absence of action. Okay. We were blessed with um, with a, a great deal of chair board chair experience on this board, which I'm which I value tremendously. <laughs> and um, thank you all. Uh, shall we then adjourn by consensus at nine oh seven? Many yes. many things. Yeah. Good job! Wow. <laughs> to everybody, thank yeah. you, everybody. My dream you come did. true. <laughs> Take good care. Good night. Bye, everybody. Good night, guys. Bye. Good night.